Good morning and welcome to Global Evangelistic Center here in Kissimmee, Florida. At our church, we continue to be in prayer for the 11 dead and six wounded victims of the Pittsburgh Tree of Life Synagogue. The incident being the deadliest attack in U.S. history on the Jewish community. We continue to pray for the family and friends of those departed and for the city itself that a time of healing will come. In your Bibles, the book of Revelation, chapter 17. Now I said for those that like to honor the word of God, you can stand. But, but you know, it's up to you. <laughs> In your Bibles, the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verses 3 to 6. And the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was entirely covered with blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold precious stones and pearls, and she was holding in her hand a gold cup full of the abominations and the filth of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was a name written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, false religions and heresies. I'm reading from the Amplified Version and of the abominations of the earth. On Museum Island in Berlin, Germany, there is a museum called the Pergamon Museum, where the eighth gate to the ancient city of Babylon under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar the second, the same Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon who came to Jerusalem and besieged it in the prophet Daniel's day. At this Pergamum museum in Germany, the Ishtar gates of Babylon are now currently being held and as magnificent as the vibrant glazed bricks of these gates are with its walls showing about 120 lions, bulls, dragons, and flowers. What is even more amazing than these opulent gates that were once one of the seven wonders of the ancient world? What is even more amazing than these opulent gates is what they represent in the prophetic realm as it is relevant, very relevant to our present time. This morning, we are continuing our series on wisdom from the tabernacle of Moses, where we are at the point of standing right in the front of the tabernacle of manifestation and as much as I absolutely love the peace and the serenity of my classical music, <laughs> I realize that peace and serenity are the last things that we can expect if we truly intend to enter that sacred tabernacle of his manifested presence. Because that will require warfare. <laughs> warfare against the demonic forces that have been strategically positioned from the days of Moses' tabernacle built under direction of none less than the Lord God Almighty. There is a diabolic triad on assignment to stop you from your breakthrough. I believe breakthrough is on the way, the prophet said, I hear, I smell, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Yeah, yeah. Breakthrough is on the way, breakthrough. You see, it, 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 it makes no difference what wilderness of 
of hardship, emotional stress, financial challenge, family trial, or even illness you might be going through right now. Sometimes we just have to stop and blank out all of that noise and just look to God. The word says, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. The Lord with keepeth thee. He shall neither slumber nor sleep. Sometimes we just have to block out the noise and just look to God as Deuteronomy 3 and 16 encouraged the Hebrew people in their wilderness from Sinai to, to Canaan. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid of, or, or terrified because of them for the Lord. Your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Got to encourage yourself because courage comes from encouragement. But there at the bottom of Mount Sinai were the Hebrew people that were called and appointed to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation set apart for God's purpose, but unable to exercise the necessary discipline, <laughs> faith, and patience that was so vitally important to be able to effectively stand in the office that God had called them and still calls us to there at the bottom of Mount Sinai. God's covenant children not only demonstrated their impatience but neglected that which they had been consecrated for as they returned to their old ways. Returning to the cultic and demonic ways of the Egyptians that they had learned while being not just enslaved by them, but immersed in that lifestyle and culture for 430 years. In Exodus 32, we see that the impatient Hebrew people demanded <laughs> They didn't ask. They demanded that Aaron, who had been left in charge of the flock, so to speak, make them a God who would go before them to lead them, as the Lord God Jehovah did. But, but, but to me, you don't have to be Einstein for this one. You don't have to be Einstein to know that there is no God like Jehovah, no God like Jehovah. You see, there is no way that any vain idol could have so miraculously demonstrated his power to 603,550 men, a, man, uh, a number not including wives and children, which would have swollen the ranks to millions. Uh, there is no way that any vain idol could have so miraculously demonstrated his power to so many people with the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night to lead them. I don't care what you might have been through or what lies you might have heard before. I'm here to tell you that there is no God like Jehovah. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we have to, to tell God that God, I'm going to stand on your word in the face of a defiant enemy. 
in the face of an almost atheist enemy. And sometimes they are our own family. Sometimes you have to say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Psalm 86, 7 to 9. There is no one like you among the gods, small g. <laughs> oh Lord, nor are there any works of wonder and majesty like yours. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is no God like John. Sister Army, get ready to read for me Exodus chapter 32. Verses 2 to 5. Exodus chapter 32, verses 2 to 5. In, in Exodus 32, we see the impatient Hebrew people that they demanded that Aaron make them a God who would go before them to lead them as the Lord God Jehovah, which, my friends, is impossible. <laughs> but none the less. Aaron obliged them. Exodus chapter 32, verses 2 to 5. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Amen. So Aaron replied to them, Take off the gold rings that are in the ears of your wives, your sons and daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took the gold from their hands and fashioned it with an engraving tool, I made it into a molten calf, and they said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And now when Aaron saw the molten calf, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. You see, there is no doubt when we read this that, that Aaron pulled on that which he himself had grown up his whole life with as he resided in Egypt and in Egypt a bull Apis was sacred to the god Ptah and emblematic of him and, and all around the world bovine worship as it is properly called is something that is practiced worldwide we look Hinduism, with over 1.5 billion followers, and this is the third largest religion in the world that, that, that yearly still celebrate the festival of Gopstami, which is dedicated to Lord Krishna and cows, and in the words of the father of the nation of India, Mahatma Gandhi, regarding the veneration of cows and, uh, and suggesting ending cow slaughter to be the first step to stopping violence against all animals. Gandhi said, I worship it and I shall defend its worship against the whole world and stated that the central fact of Hinduism is cow protection. Now, I don't want my Indian followers to be upset at me, but I'm going to enjoy my steak when I feel like eating it. We look at <laughs> Buddhism with over 520 million followers. Please don't write me. Uh, over 7% of the global population and is the world's fourth largest religion where cattle is seen as a form of reborn human beings in, in, in the endless rebirth cycles. You see, I would love to just preach you happy. Don't get me wrong. I would love to preach you happy every Sunday. But if we are going to effectively walk into the apostolic mandate, on our lives, GEC, or wherever there is an apostolic mandate, 
if we are going to walk into the effective mandate on our lives as a church, then what we are going to have to realize is that every now and then, we are going to have to not just dance. I love to dance. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I, I will dance like David dance. Uh, uh, and shout. Uh, sometimes you, you just got to shout because the prophet said it feels like fire shut up in my, my bones. <laughs> but sometimes we are going to have to address issues that may be of a, a scholarly nature that will set the forecast for us to advance into God's divine purpose. You, 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 you see, looking at it on a bigger scale with, with, with spiritual insight, we realize that it's, it's not about the animal itself, but the act which is idolatry. There can never be a substitute for God. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 6. Mama V. You see, modern days, modern days, the cult, uh, there's so many cults out there, the, the, the cult of evolved consciousness. They cannot change the word of God. He still says as he did to the Hebrew people in the Exodus, I am the Lord your God who has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Mama V, Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 6. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, hmm. any likeness of anything that is heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations hmm. of those who hate me, but showing mercy on the thousands to those who have loved me and <laughs> keep my commandments. My God. You see, you got to realize that with some of these things, because of the idolatry of our four parents, there are some generational curses yes. that have to be broken. Yes. There are three, three distinct things that stand out with present day significance for us regarding the, the molten calf or, or, or the sacred cow. Three things that will help us see how it was as it was in the beginning. So shall it be, not in the end, right now. Because right now we are in the dispensational time, I fully believe, called the end. Three things that show us how we have gone now from the, 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 the sacred cow to the scarlet beast. Also showing us the relevance of all of this in our present time with a message from the Ishtar gates of Babylon. A key to understanding how this all takes place and translates to our present time is in our staying focused not so much on the sacredness of the cow, but on what it represents. Idolatry. Brother Greg, get ready to read for me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. And one of the greatest weapons that Satan has, which is what I would call his morphing ability, you see, young people that like Power Rangers and even our nature lovers that, 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 that are familiar with the chameleon. The chameleon, they'll really get this. They'll really understand this. The Bible warns us about the devil and warns us about transformers of the kingdom of darkness in our end time. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, hmm. deceitful workers, hmm. transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, hmm. for Satan himself is transformed <laughs> into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed <laughs> as the ministers of righteousness, <laughs> whose end shall be according to their works. My God. Now, 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 now come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Uh, that's a word. E even for some people out there who have allowed others uh, into their lives, <laughs> Only to find out that after we embrace their friendship or even marry some of them, they morph into a totally different creature. And you got to wonder, where is the original person? Because right now, there's a monster. Some people out there, they morph on you. Some friends, you take them into your embrace and they just, they just completely morph. And some spouses, you marry them and they look all sweet. And, and the minute you say, do, take off, they take off that mask. They take off that mask. They take off that mask and they become a monster. Where is the original person? My God. One of the greatest weapons that Satan has is his morphing ability. And this is a key to understanding the three distinct things that stand out with present day Significance for us in showing how our sacred cow will in the end times morph into the scarlet beast. And, and, and this all tied in with the Ishtar gates and ancient Babylon. The three things to stay focused on are number one, government. Number two, Commerce, commerce. And number three is worship. <laughs> you see, see, when we look at, 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 at government, we go all the way back to, to, to really ancient Babylon. And who's the key figure there? Nimrod. Nimrod. Nimrod was the creator of the Tower of Babel, which was the center of the first one world government and one world economic system and one world religion. And when we go back to, to, to ancient Egypt, Apis is depicted through Egypt's history as a striding bull, but usually with a solar disk and Uraeus, the, the sacred serpent, which symbolized the king's power between its horns. But what is of present day significance, my God, is that in ancient Babylon, my Bible study tools, always study the word of God with, with other references that you can count count on. My Bible study tool also points out that Nimrod, grandson of Ham, Ham, son of Noah, was the real founder of the Babylonian system that has gripped the world ever since the system of organized competition of man-ruled governments and empires began. When we look, a lot of people don't know this because this is a hot topic right now. When we look at the issue of Nimrod, I'm going to be very careful in what I say. We go back to Genesis chapter 10 verses 
8 to 12. And it says, Cush. Cush. Someone say, Hello, brother. Cush <laughs> became the father of Nimrod. So I ain't getting all pan Africanists on you, but, 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 but that means that Nimrod's daddy was a brother. <laughs> Because Kush means black man. <laughs> See, you got to understand these things because we are in a time and we are in an era of the revival of racism. And a major part of the revival of racism is the erasing of our past and our history. <laughs> Ancient Babylon. My God, there is an unholy trinity, people, mm. that we need to worry about. And the Antichrist is a part of it. Mm. I'm trying to go through a lot of this. There's so much to teach you. But the next, the thing that I want you to know about the new world order that's coming is Revelation. Chapter 13, verses 16 to 18. Also he compels all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast and that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let the person who has enough insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the imperfect number of man, and his number is six, six, six. My God, in the end time, we will see Satan's greatest act of counterfeit when his target will be the blessed Holy Trinity as he as God, small g, gives life to two beasts that are depicted in the book of Revelation. Notice I said Revelation. It's singular because it's not plural like I hear some people say. It, it, singular because it's about the singular revelation of Yeshua HaMasiah. These two beasts are the Antichrist and the false prophet who Revelation 13 tells us will share their evil authority and work in union to fully institute idolatrous worship. And to me, what is so amazing about this end time prophecy is that the order of the kingdom has been reversed as the second beast, which is the Antichrist, will be diligently dedicated to making the inhabitants of the earth accept the vile and evil leader that is the Antichrist, whereas in, in times past, and we look through our scriptures, the prophets rebuked evil and did not sell their soul and quiet their moral principles to endorse that which is repugnant in the eyes of God. Where are the prophets of God that are still willing to stand up to principalities and powers and rebuke them from being sinful and having actions that are repugnant to God. These are the end times. <sighs> Revelation 13 and 14 tells us that this second beast will deceive those unconverted ones who inhabit the earth into believing him with regards to worshiping the Antichrist because of the signs which he is given by Satan 
to perform in the presence of the first beast, telling those who inhabit the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded fatally by the sword and who has come back to life. So, so, so right there, we see the prophecy that the real Antichrist will appear to miraculously survive an assassination attempt, verse 15. And he is given power to breathe, to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast will even appear to speak and cause those that do not bow down and worship the image of the beast to be put to death. PowerPoints. PowerPoints. On commerce and the coming new world order. Number one. Selling and trading is a foundational necessity in the Babylonian economic system. Number two. It is an economic system that will be tyrannically controlled. Kind of like how when oligarchies get in power and they control the economic system. It will be tyrannically controlled by a government with global impact. That's the new world order. And number three, a key to understanding how the harlot on the scarlet beast has influenced the many waters, the many nations, is an understanding how her idolatrous practices have led people to divert money away from God's kingdom into funding what amounts to idolatry. My God. This morning, I've condensed a whole lot of information for you. I have laid a comprehensive base of understanding for understanding what I firmly believe is a prophetic message and warning regarding judgment in the new year. I see in the prophetic that next year will be a year of judgment. That's what God showed me. Next year will be a year of judgment. But to understand how all of this comes together in our present and future time is to tap into the prophetic with regards to what I revealed about the ish targets uh, that are right now at the, the, the Pergamon Museum on Museum Island in Berlin, Germany. Uh, I will conclude that very important message, God willing, in the second part of this message. But my prayer focus this morning is there is no doubt that Aaron pulled on that which he himself had grown up with his whole life as he resided in Egypt and then Egypt resided in him uh, and the bull, the apis, was, was, was sacred. Aaron, instead of advancing by faith into destiny, turned back to the familiar old ways. But growth, growth will never happen if you pander only to your traditional base. And if you do not increase what you already have, even with true leaders, they will not dumb down their followers. If those that dumb down their followers, they're not true leaders. Those that dumb down their followers by playing to their ignorance and propagating dangerous lies that worsen their condition, they need to be rebuked. They are not good leaders. You cannot increase until you release. And you cannot increase by doing the same old thing. And the, the other thing, I believe that there are some of us right here and under the sound of my voice, wherever it is heard, 
that have allowed others into uh, your lives only to, to find out that after you embrace their friendship or even marry some of them, <laughs> that they morph into a totally different creature. And you got to wonder, where is that original person? Some people will do a lot to fool you into getting you where they want to have you and manipulating you. I want to pray your strength. I want to pray your strength in the Lord. I want to pray for protection. And I want to pray for, for healing. Uh, as God removes the abuser, if necessary, that has violated your peace of mind. That's one of the worst things to be violated, your peace of mind and they have left you and I want to pray for us to walk or continue to walk in our kingdom dan dan mandate God has called us with a kingdom mandate and calling of God God has called us to take over governments with our influence watch me get in trouble for this one a, 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 a famous leader once said, don't boo. I can't tell you who to vote for, but one thing I do know, don't boo, vote. You got a civic duty to do that. Whatever or whoever you decide to vote for, when you boo and you just make a noise and you're not doing anything to change the situation, don't boo, vote. Amen. God is calling for a new sound of worship. God is tired of the old way of worship. God is calling for those that will not be afraid to go prostrate before him. To seek his presence. To let the Ruach HaKodesh come into the place and shake it up. To bring in his presence. His Shekinah presence that will so saturate environments that even as people walk into the environment, the, the, the lame start walking, uh, the deaf start hearing, the blind start seeing. And that which psychologists would have you, their little dainty bow ties, no offense, Doc, <laughs> sitting on their sofas for years now, tell me with a voice that'll just put me fast asleep at any rate. What is your problem? You'll be solving your own problem. What is your problem? My problem, Doc, is that I need to get up off of this sofa and grab a hold of his talit, grab a hold of the hem of his garden, and his blood will make me whole. What it might have taken years to fix one touch. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. Yes. His blood has made me whole. Yes. I'm not knocking psychology. I'm not knocking such wonderful people like the Jewish fellow Sigmund Freud and, 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 and Ivan Pavlov and all of the rest of the profound people that have given us a wonderful body of work. But I, I, I know a physician. <laughs> who is the great physician, who uh, don't need no hundred dollar an hour uh, session, that if I could just get it right with him, if I could just surrender it on the altar, and if I could just get my praise on, then my deliverance will come. And just one touch, one touch, years of abuse. <laughs> Years of people deceiving me. Years of people being cruel and brutal to me. One touch of that rabbi's talit and I'll get fixed. And God wants us to, to get it right. To stop robbing him because a time is coming when revelation will be fulfilled when we won't be able to buy, sell, or trade, when that system comes in place, and brothers and sisters, some people that know me personally, they say, you got a lot of zeal for a pastor. It's, it's, it's because I see certain things. I'm being careful here. I see certain things happening that are shaping up for the end times 
where, where, where the very elect have been deceived and they have prostituted themselves out. But me, I will not prostitute myself because I serve a living God. I still believe that the God that I serve is the God that answers by fire. See, 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 hate and all the rest of that stuff that's pushed. I'm not about hate, I'm about love. Yes. See, because if you love on your brother, then th the Muslim will be friends with the Jew. If you love on your brother, yes. then some people that might walk a little funny, <laughs> they won't even know when that which is inside them that needs to be yes. fixed gets yes. fixed. Yes. And the healing power of God replaces that which they miss from not having a father a figure in their life. If you love on them, hate does not solve a problem. Hate and fear mongers are from the devil. I serve a God of love. The woman that was caught in the midst of adultery, they brought him to her feet. And him not being, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I won't say that. Him not, not, not being a part of the, 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 the Pharisees of that day, <laughs> the, the donkey riding Messiah, <laughs> he, he, he loved on her. And he said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. <laughs> Watch me get in trouble for this. I don't care if you ain't straight, that's between you and God. That ain't my business. The institution of government is for all people. Right, right, right. My job is to show you a God of love. Yeah. Not a God of hate that wants to put you behind an electric wire fence. My God that I serve is a God of love. Yeah. And once he starts loving on me, I can do what I was unable to do for years. Because I can forgive. They won't have crazy people running into places of worship to shoot up the place led by nothing but hate and people that fear monger. Government. We pray for them. Worship. It's a new sound coming. Commerce. God wants you to be empowered. He wants generational curses over your finance broken. But he still asks, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me in your tithes and offering. Religious people like to say, God don't curse you if you don't tithe. But the scripture goes on to say, yet you are cursed with a curse because you're robbing God. Plenty of people, it's cheaper they come to church with a mask on and, 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 and with a handgun in the back because they're doing the same thing. They are robbing God. God does not want you to rob him because it's about building up the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. <sighs> Government, worship, commerce. You got to leave that which is old. Get something that's new. In the matchless name of Yeshua Hamasiah, our soon coming king. Amen.